Well, that's kind of what has happened. I've seen a few things on YouTube where they do this listening for the first time. The moment the bass starts at the beginning of Harridan, they like go back in their seat and go, what's this? And they're, they're kind of surprised. And then the drums come in and then they're starting to get in. And then it's like they've come home. It's Porcupine Tree. I think it's, it's definitely a mixture of the familiar and the unfamiliar. Somehow it sounds like Porcupine Tree as we've always known them, but at the same time it has, it's a fresh take. It's an evolution, it's a new take on, on that DNA, if you like. Hold your fear and check my... To say it's kind of like a cross between Pink Floyd and Radiohead. And he says, oh, that sounds great, I'll have to look at that. And that's it. Yeah, he's going to be disappointed, isn't he? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> no. Uh, I always say, I always say, yeah, it's it's rock music, and then they say, oh, like Guns N' Roses, and I say, no, more mm. conceptual, you know. Mm, end up talking. To I might, I might end up, you know, dropping the Radiohead word, yeah. And I like to think we've earned the right now to be seen as someone who has a unique place. We play Porcupine Tree music. I don't know what that is. It's a bit of metal, it's a bit of ambient, it's a bit of songwriter, it's a bit of funk, it's a bit of jazz, it's a bit of, a bit of whatever it is, it's a bit of industrial, it's a bit of pop. It's all in there. It's all in there. So, I, you know, I like to think we've carved out our own place. Yeah. Sometimes when I hear urban music, you know, like I just heard the new Kendrick Lamar single yesterday. Fascinating me, he's got this old Marvin Gaye track but he's wrapped over the top of it, and it's got, it's got this weird kind of hybrid of different influences and different sounds. And I think that's what I love about people like him and Kanye West, they'll take from anything, progressive rock song, mm. old hip hop song, old soul track. Mm. They're not sort of obsessed with being generic. And I think that's what rock music has forgotten how to do. And urban music is why urban music is so dominant now, because it seems somehow fresher in the way it looks at music and rock music is still obsessed with the Beatles' blueprint. We're still, you know, rock music still is has still still following, whether you play death metal or whatever, or industrial, or whatever you play, we're still basically using the, the Beatles' blueprint that was laid down in the 60s. How to construct a song, verse, chorus, middle eight. The urban guys, they don't care about that, and I think that's why it sounds fresher, to me anyway. And by the way, we don't care about that either. <laughs> None of our songs have a conventional structure. Well, I've been lucky because that was my chosen instrument, the synthesizer. So Brian Eno called it an instrument in development, which it is. It's different from anything else because you don't know what the person's going to do with it. You can walk into a studio or a rehearsal room with a guitar, it doesn't matter how original you are on that guitar, you know roughly what it's about, mm. what the person's going to do. Mm. Likewise with the drum kit, doesn't matter how well the drummer plays or how he's got the sound of his kit, you've still got an idea what's going on. If a guy walks in with a modular synthesizer, can you guess what he's going to do? It could be anything. It could be anything from chimes and gongs to reed instruments to um, pure electronics. And that's, that's why for me, um, it's a nightmare for engineers because they hate that part of the recording process in a studio because I just give them two leads and that they've got to deal with what I give them. They hate that process. But for me, it's, um, that's what gave me a career in music. It was my only way to have a career in music was working with synthesizers because as a, as a player, I didn't have anything really special to offer. It's a, I mean, it's a very exciting time if you're, if you're interested in sound. sound I mean, there are, the range of sounds you can create now is almost limitless. Um, and that has its own problems, because when you have a limitless, limitless palette of sounds, where do you start, you know? And I think that's why, conversely, a lot of modern pop now is very homogenized and has a very narrow musical vocabulary. Which is strange, because there's all these possibilities out there now, but it's almost like it's too much. And I think, in a way, that's a microcosm for the world that we live in. There's almost too much information for most of us to deal with these days. So we're like, okay, I can't handle that. I'm just going to watch bullshit on TikTok all day. Because I can handle that. I can handle housewives dancing to Britney Spears in their kitchen. I can't handle all this stuff that's going on in the media. And the news. So I think there's also a degree of that going on in music. But I love that. I mean, I love, I love exploring. I think for me, also now, having an established solo career, if these guys said to me, if I did something and they said to me, no, we don't like that, I'm like, okay, I'll try something else. 
because I'm not, I'm not so precious about getting every single bit of my creativity into Porcupine Tree now. I've got other thing going on. So I'm, I'm much, I feel much less obliged to control the direction and much more relaxed about, you know, throwing out ideas that I personally liked that the other guys didn't. It's good. They're, they're both interesting in a creative sense in that our solo careers, we can do whatever we like. Within Porcupine Tree, it's, it's a creative thing where you can push the boundaries and see how far we can go while still keeping yeah. the, the DNA of, of the group. That's a very good analogy. I didn't think about it. Yeah, I mean, but that is kind of what I am, you know. And and um, one of the things I've always said about all of these classic albums is that when I remix them, I'm remixing them for people that know them better than I do. As a rule, I'm not remixing them for people that have never heard them. I'm remixing them for people that bought the vinyl when it came out. They bought the first CD issue. They bought the re remastered CD with the bonus tracks. And now they're going to buy the surround mix with the demos and the outtakes. So you're talking about making these mixes for people who are intimately familiar and they treat them like a sacred text almost. So the analogy I use, which is similar to yours, but slightly different, slightly more romantic and glamorous, is it's like cleaning the Sistine Chapel. You don't want to change the Michelangelo picture there, the painting there, but you just want to make it gleam and shine in a way. And you want, you want to make people see it, perhaps see it in a way they've not seen it before. So it's a very, very delicate tightrope to walk. I'm not quite sure um, exactly if I get it right every time, you know, in terms of revisionism. But so far, so good in terms of the audience reaction has tended to be pretty good to what I do. Which is why I keep getting requests to do, it, to do more of it. Well, the ones I'm the most proud of are the ones where I feel I made the biggest difference, positive difference. Because not all of these albums, you know, were brilliantly recorded or mixed, technically, in the first place. Sometimes, you know, time ran out or they were using faulty equipment. You'd be amazed how often classic albums were recorded on faulty equipment or mixed onto, onto tape recorders that were malfunctioning. So some of them I'm really proud of being able to make them, you know, sound more vibrant. Than they, than they ever have. Jethro Tull's Aqualung is a, is a good example. It always sounded slightly flat, the original mix. And then I found out that it was mixed onto a, a, a quarter inch tape machine that hadn't been set up properly. Mm. So what I had on the multi-track sounded so much better than the mix everyone had been listening to for 50 years, 40 years. So I was really pleased with what we were able to do with that one, as an, as an example, yeah.